What's good, yo? <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Making Gains TV, where we talk about people making gains in their everyday life. Today we have Coach Tev in the house. Coach Tev in the house. The light skinned player president. You already know that. <laughs> um, Coach Tev, that was a good headbutt. It was. Even though you're a D back. Yeah, I usually don't get that contact. You don't get that, that contact? Nah, no, you're too big. Cool, cool. Pause. <laughs> so uh, let's talk about, you know, football is your background, football is my background, yep. and now we're both coaches. Let's, let's take it way back, because even in our, our experiences, um, as far as like high school to college, recruiting got different for both of us. Like I was still sending out tapes, like VHSs, and yeah. then you probably... Uh, some VHSs, some DVDs, you straight like you DVDs. Were, you were in a transition to DVDs. Yeah. Now it's like... YouTube, no one sends anything to create a YouTube, huddle, it's all on the internet, which is dope, you know, which is, it is what it is. But talk about like your recruiting process, who was like, what camps did you go to, what was like your strategy, how many did you go to, how'd you yeah. end up at UConn? So, um, I did the whole camp circuit, um, started with one at Rutgers called the Big Time Showcase. Um, at my time, the coaches were allowed to come to these camps and recruit at these camps and, you know, see us run our 40 and, and do all this stuff. So this big time showcase was, um, you know, the premier combine type of thing that you would want to go to in the area. It was held at Rutgers. And now coaches can't see you at camp Now, anymore. yeah, now you coaches can't come. You have to get on campus. Yep, you have to get on campus for them to offer you at this time. They would, they could be like, hey, you got a you got a scholarship, verbal scholarship. Like right after a, yeah. a, one of these showcases. Yeah. Um, so I did that. Um, I went to Pitt. Pitt was a big one. Boston College was a huge one. Penn State was a huge one. Um, I remember me and Devin Street, we did the whole camp circuit together. We went to Pitt, we ran our 40, and those Mac schools were just giving us scholarships based off our right 40, the 40. Right off nice. our 40-yard dash. And it's crazy because you can't do that. You can't do that nowadays. Yeah, people, like everyone's got training. Everyone comes with guys like us to get yeah. their 40 right. So you got to... As a coach, you gotta hold on and wait to see. 40's great, but like, can they even catch the ball? Exactly. So, uh, so then, uh, how'd you, how'd you end up at UConn? So or I ended up at UConn. Um, I had a few scholarships. I originally was talking to North Carolina and decided to go there at first, but then went to UConn's camp again. Me and Devin, we did every camp together. Um, we did one on ones. We ran our 40. We were a little late in the day. We got there the second half. You get yeah. lost on the way to you got? I mean, I was you kind of find we were supposed to leave at a certain time, and I wasn't home by a certain time. So yeah, Butch was pretty mad. I um, much don't play now. <laughs> get in that car. You're right. <laughs> we gotta go. But uh, we went up there. We did the same thing. Forty one on one, seven on seven. Uh, we met with Randy Etzel, who now just got rehired as the head coach at UConn. Um, he said, as soon as you guys drive off campus, give me a phone call, and you know. They offered both of us in the car with our dads. It was an awesome experience. You had to wait to like leave the camp. Is that yeah, like leave the, the camp. Rule? Yeah, leave the you know stay within the NCAA rules. Um, I wasn't committed for a while to them. I had the offer, but I ultimately decided that that was the best fit for me because of the opportunity in terms of you know every corner that was there before me um, within four years got drafted to the NFL. There's so corner you currently still playing in the NFL. We got Bleedy Ray Wilson in the Super Bowl. Shout out Bleedy. Shout out Atlanta Falcons, yeah. Hope my boys win. But um By the yeah, time they see this though, like it'll be over. The Metal Army will know. They will already win, so I mean I hope. Yeah. Anyways, but uh <laughs> I had the opportunity, so I, I, I jumped I jumped on and I thought it was the best for myself at the time and I got the opportunity to run track there as well. So oh, that's I was dope. a dual sport. Two sport athlete, yeah. Two sport athlete, yep. Why why don't you hang one of your jerseys on this wall, man? Maybe. I got you, man. All uh, right. You see, you hear it. Yeah. There's not a jersey on here soon. <laughs> Y'all hunt them down. Um, so then how to, so you had the opportunity to play at the next level to, you know, bounce around the league and do your thing. What was that transition like? Coming yeah. out of college, going to the pros, agents, like, you know, kind of just sticking around the phones. Yeah, so my journey was a little different. I went from uh, University of Connecticut, UConn, to Monmouth University, where I transferred to. Um, had to sit out a year due to NCAA rules and um, came back, was a captain my senior year. Crushed it. Yeah. I just crushed it. Had a great year in the Division One AA level. That's awesome. Um, we were independent at the time, but schools were coming in, or t 
teens were coming in uh, asking about myself and you know my journey and whatnot. Uh, it's a little different than most kids' journey to the NFL. Yeah. Uh, you know, you usually don't go from one school to the next to the NFL. That transitions. Completely kind of like kills you when you yeah leave schools and like, yeah it kills it doesn't your help whole to transfer out sometimes yes yes it doesn't help to transfer out sometimes but in, in my case it did I, I was fortunate to have you know Miles Austin was yeah. in Monmouth grade um, Jose Gums was before me he played with the Redskins for a little bit so I had the opportunity to go to the NFL um, played with the Jets the Chiefs Broncos mainly for the majority of the time which was a great experience yeah that was like. You know, it was great, but also, it was also, like, tough because they had they didn't have bad corners. Yeah, no. They had, like, the best guys at the position ever. Yeah. So, like, so, when I got there, we had two Pro Bowl cornerbacks. Yeah. They were keeping five. There was eight of us. Yeah. <laughs> so, so like, it, was, it, was, it, was, it was pretty tough. Um, those two guys, Akeem Tlaib and, and Chris Harris Jr., I mean, I always looked up to Chris Harris Jr. just because he was someone in my similar situation where – he was an undrafted free agent. He came, he made his mark, made a second contract, was a $60 million man, nice. all pro, um, pro bowl player. Yeah. Someone who I looked up to and you know, that I set my goals to be like. Yeah. And it was weird, what was also weird, he was only two years older than me. He was in the NFL for four years prior to that I even entered. Yeah, that's wild. <laughs> it's crazy. He was, a, he was a vet and he was only a little bit older than you? Yeah. That's crazy. There was a kid that came out of Louisville like two years before me, and he was 19. He mm -hmm. came from like Africa, was the craziest Remember defensive him. lineman, and got drafted at Skipped like a couple years 18 in high school. years old. Yeah. yeah, he played college football at 15. It was just a freak of nature. But um, so you had you had like, that, and that's what people don't understand. Like everyone thinks there's like a job. Like if you're good, you can play. But like you ran the fastest. At your position, yeah, ran the, the fastest forty. Ran the fastest forty in that 2014 draft cat class for uh, and quarterbacks. Then, and then you end up on you know a roster with the the best corners in the league. So it's like people feel like like you 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 might you know some people like try to beat their head over it. And it's like it's like there's only so many jobs, and then you know there's guys that've been there. So it's you yeah, can, you know you can hold your breath and wait forever, or you can you know you kind of like you can you can bounce around the league forever. But there's only so many jobs. It's pretty much the world's most elite, like and that's the industry. Thing. It's it, it's a it's a business. At the end of the day, yeah. um, college is great. College was awesome because you know, you were my boy. Yeah. You might have played over me, but you were still one of my best friends. Yeah. Like Billy Ray Wilson, for example, is one of my best friends. But I was constantly his guy behind him. Yeah. For so amount of years. And then he graduates. But, yeah. Then he and graduates. Then you get to step in. Yeah. You get to step in. But <clears throat> the NFL is totally different. They don't care who you are, how old you are, what you do, as long as you're producing on the film, the field, you're gonna get that next spot. It's a yeah. business. So if you're not producing and you're not living up to your standards or your level of play, you never know. You, you could be sick, tell someone you're sick. If yeah. not, it's gonna show in the field and you're gonna ultimately get sent home. But then if you are producing, like, that's oh, yeah. job security. Like, oh, you, yeah. you produce for 10, 12, 15 years, yep. it's like, all right, well, we never looked at anyone else because we never had to. Exactly, and so that's, the, um, that's the point where you, you get days off, <coughs> a.k.a. Peyton Manning. Shout out to my boy. <laughs> you said Peyton used to roll up in, like, khakis and a suitcase. Like, yeah, so, like, building. yeah, every day I would come into the facility, sweats, hoodie, book bag with my playbook in it. This man Peyton used to come up, suit, tie, slacks briefcase with his playbook like in it. Straight out the dry cleaner. Yeah, it was it was so dope. Like say, say this was one of the tables we ate breakfast at. Peyton had his tray sitting there two minutes before he showed up because the, the chefs knew this is not a joke. They knew what time he came every day. Oh my god. And they had it ready for him. They covered it. And then he he would just come to just open scream it, in the back like, eat it. Yo know, get Peyton's tray ready. Yeah that man had two lockers not one. That's crazy. I had half of one. <laughs> All right, so then you got to also play in Canada. What was that like? Yeah. You know, what was the difference between besides like the extra space and the extra man? You know, kind of was it a whole different game? How did that feel? Yeah, the CFL experience was awesome. I think that was to date that with the Broncos going back to back. That was the best year of my life in terms of being able to experience different types of you know people, cultures, um, atmospheres, all that good stuff. But 
Canadian football is totally different game. Like you said, you know, people, you know, extra player, the field's 20 yards longer, the end zone's 20 yards longer, there's the field goal post is in the front of the end zone. So you can like use it as a pick. Yeah, so That's like awesome. well, if we're in the red zone and it's fourth, or there's not even fourth down, it's three down football. Oh. So it's third and third and two, you might get a deep fade, 25 yard fade because yeah. They're allowed to do that. Because there's more end zone. More end zone. So it, your basic football fundamentals had to completely switch. Because in the NFL, it was, oh, third and, third and two on the goal line. I have 10 yards to cover. I have until the wall to cover. And I know that I could be a little more aggressive here. Yeah. I got to play this. I had to play this third and one like it was a, you know, third and 20. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? third and 20. So we had to play the sticks at the end of the day. But. Wow. But, but it was a third to like 1 to 20. So it's because <laughs> yeah. all they need is the 1. Yeah, they, they just 20. need the 1, but yeah, they actually have 20, 23 yards. Yeah. That opens up a huge uh, deal. Yeah. So now, um, you know, we people we have you on the show, cause your, your experience was, uh, you know, unique. And a lot, of, a lot of our clients, a lot of people we work with don't get to know it. And now that you're a coach, like, How'd you also transition? How'd you pull from that experience to being a coach now, strength training, and you know, you also your first year coaching at Freedom High School yeah. with working with DBs. Yeah, no, it was it was awesome. Um, it was a humbling experience to say the least. Um, you know, I was working with you um, over at the high school in the off season. You know, training softball, baseball, uh, lacrosse, football, all the sports across the spectrum at Freedom High School. And just ran into one of those things where you know the relationship was so good and the the vibe between me and the players was just something that chemistry was just yeah, was un, unmatchable where coach Roder came in and said hey would you want to be you know we hired a db coach but you know we could use another one um would you be interested in doing it and i said of course and i mean seeing the kids you know from day one I, i'm gonna use jamal williamson as an example um Seeing someone who wasn't as well polished to, yeah. at the end of the season, playing against Liberty, having a pick, two picks, two almost picks. two pick sixes. He had yeah. one pick six. So like just to see that 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 growth within a player was so gratifying. And you know, if I wasn't able to play the game, I was still a part of the game. Yeah. And it was huge. It was huge for myself. There's like a couple of pictures on your Instagram of interceptions. Oh yeah, every and time. It's like, and it's like you versus your yeah. own DB up the sideline on the interception. Like, yes. Like boom, like like picture perfect running form. Any interception that my guys had, I was sprinting down the sideline with them. And right to the edge of the coaching box. Shout out to whoever the photographer was, man. You, <laughs> you got it a couple of times. I gotta give you that one. You got me with Joe Young. You got me with Jamal. All those guys. Uh, Kyrie. Yeah, it was. It's awesome, and and be able to post those pictures. And I I joke around. I say running through the six with my with my woes, <laughs> like like Drake says. Yeah, and I'm running through the six six one zero with my with my guys. So. And it's like you know that's such a all your opportunities, and then even that one. That one's such a, like a rare one, you know, to be like to be photographed up the sideline with your guys going nuts. Yeah, and, uh, it's kind of like I think like coaching like dreams that you can uh, your guys. What you teach them translates, and then they put it in, and then and then you see it happen, and it's like, you know, let's you never leave the game. It's not the, it's not the game, but it's it's the next best feeling. It's uh yeah, and it was crazy being a coach from the standpoint where when I was being coached, I was coached by you know maybe like a little bit more old school guys. Yeah, and today it's it's, it's a little different game. Uh, the kids relate to you in a totally different manner yeah. than we probably, I mean, I can't sit there and I can't yell at things that my coaches said to me yeah. anymore. I'll get in trouble. Um, so, like, I, I took the, the approach to being a, um, a player's coach. I know I always, you know, produce better with coaches like that. And my guys, we had, like, a little swag dance. We were out there dabbing, <laughs> hitting them folk. And, you know, we had a, we had a little chant, which is pretty cool. Um, that we did before every game, but that was just so gratifying. I can't even. You know. Yeah. So um, so that's like another thing, like coaching philosophy. Like like you said, you kind of mimic the the players' coach because that's how you best produce. What's um? What would you say like some coaching don'ts are? I feel like like 
what what were some of the things that turned you off the coaches that you know you'll never do that you that like you know because because you're a young coach now and it's it's easy for guys to translate and uh you know to, to, to just rock with you but when you you know what do you what what do you know you'll stay away from even even as you pick I'm, up I'm years I'm all in this about game? I'm all about constructive criticism like if if I'm doing something wrong I want to be told but I believe that the approach should be a little different um, I know <clears throat> I mean I don't really want to elaborate too much but yeah. I don't want to be I feel like me being yelled at at, at sometimes it Deter my confidence. It brought yeah. my confidence down to here. You know, I remember I could recite one time in college. I I wasn't having a good day. I I messed up on the same play uh, three times in a row, and a coach told me, "Hey, you better get your stuff together before I send you back to Bethlehem, Pennsylvania." Yeah. And I mean, that was one time where it was really like in my. I'm like, this is real. Yeah. I, I like that. I could take that, but not everybody could take that. So my coaching approach is totally different. I'll say that, but in a manner where it's like, hey, listen, <laughs> you do that again, McNulty going to be out there. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to McNulty. Shout out to my um, man, Cam. Yeah, I, I hated, like, the whole player versus coach atmosphere. Yeah. Like, like, like we, we, we both want to win, and I think, like, and uh, as I became a coach, that was one of the biggest things I translated was like, like I'm on your side, like, like I'm not asking you to do these things because, like, you know, I'm, I want to see you be exhausted and and uh, and tired. Like, I want to see you get a little bit better. I want to see you grow. I want to see you get grow grow in this exact moment mm -hmm. because this is the exact moment you're gonna be in the fourth quarter. Yeah. So if you haven't been exposed to it here, and practice and in the weight room. By the time you take it to the field, it's it's gonna be brand new, and then you're not gonna be able to perform. Yeah. So it's um, so like that that was one of my biggest obstacles as a coach is like, like letting those guys know like we're on the same side. You go home with a loss, I go home with the same loss. You go home with the dub, I go home with the dub. Like, and it's like it's not even like you know you got four years as a player as a coach. We mm -hmm. can do this you know forever. So it's not like you got more to lose than me. Yeah. But you know we take it we take it just as hard. It's yeah. Not like. You know, I, I hate losing more than winning, but um, but it's just it's just like that. I think that might be our next YouTube show. It's talking about coaching philosophy and players and like, cause it, it really needs a change. It's a uh, it's something that needs to be talked about more. Yeah. Like the mind of the athlete, those yeah. guys and people people that shout to Jarrett. Shout to Jarrett. Came in the gym today. Yeah. Um. So what uh what goals do we have? Goals. Let's, also, let's also shout out to Steel Rockets. How, yeah. how do you feel about that? Like getting ready for our 7-on-7 seven seven team? We were doing Coach great. I mean, last year we had what? We played with how many 8th eighth eighth, graders? 8th graders. We, we played, played with a bunch of 8th graders. A bunch of 8th graders who went on and started at their respectful position at their their high schools at varsity. Not yeah. not JV, not, not freshman, but varsity football. We had a couple of those guys. Um, I'm just excited to see those guys transition well, into more, this, into this, you know, like veteran role now. Yes, from like a new a veteran role. Eighth grader to yeah. like a veteran ninth grader. Yes, know. yes. That's uh, that's gonna be very exciting. Yeah, they're gonna crush it. Um, all right, man. Let's uh, let's get you out of here. Oh man, it's been a while. One for the road. <laughs> <laughs> you can't give me heads a YouTube show. It shit hurt. <laughs> I went in on that one. Yeah, you did.